Hi! Dialogs is the professional planning tool that provides you with all the necessary functions for your lighting design. In this video I will introduce you to the user interface. And I will also explain to you the most important settings. When you open Dialogs, you will first see the start mode. On the left side, you will find the different entry options for the planning of your project. By choosing exterior and building design, you start your project from scratch and you can use all the functions in Dialogs. However, if you want to speed up the process, you can also start directly with the option Import Plan or IFC. If your project consists of only one room, then it may be useful to start with room planning. Here you can quickly and easily construct a rectangular room or a free room shape. For the normative road planning you are offered a completely different user interface. And finally there is a simple indoor planning. Here the user interface is limited to only a few functions. In the center you see the last used projects, which you can directly open there. You can right-click on a project to remove it from the list, as well as clear the entire history. On the right side you will find links to a lot of useful information. A very important option here is Select your manufacturer. Here you can go directly to the overview of all Dialogs partners and their Luminaire catalogs. I will give you more information about the catalogs, the download and the functionality of the plugins in the next videos. You can always find direct access to the manufacturer list here at the top. Here are some of the most important settings that can be useful for you. Go to General Settings. Here you can configure both the reminder to save the project and the number of undo steps in a project. Dialogs can also be used in many languages. You can choose different languages for display and printout, which can be for example simplify the planning process of international projects. In addition, there's the possibility to adapt the length and photometric units to the respective standard. You also have the option to have the ISO lines automatically displayed on the calculation surfaces after the calculation. This is simply solved via this checkbox. If you are more interested in the value charts, you can also switch to them. Finally, let's go to the settings for the standards. Dialogs has automatically set the European standards. You can find more specific information here on the right side. All details of the usage profiles are displayed here in the bottom area. You will learn more about this and how the usage profiles can help you during your planning in a later video. Here you have the possibility to set a default value for the maintenance factor. And you can also select the preset for the USA or Japan in order to be able to use the corresponding profiles in the calculation for these countries as well. Here we can then close the settings. Let's go back to the start screen and open the dial building project. When the project is opened, you will immediately notice the view window. It shows you the 3D representation of an outdoor area and two buildings. Don't be afraid of the complexity of this project. I'll show you how to learn Dialog step by step in the next videos with smaller projects. I like to use this project to show you our headquarters in Germany, so you can get to know us a little better. As you can see, we can peek into the building through the glass facade. In other words, real visual references are created between the exterior and interior, but also within the building between individual floors or even between individual rooms. But there's much more. The lighting for indoor and outdoor areas is not only visualized, but of course also calculated correctly. So how is Dialog structured? 
First, let's stay with the viewport. Above the viewport, you will find four location tabs. These help you to find your way around the project and also support you when you are working on it. The button for the site means that you can see the entire project, including the outdoor area, and work in it. In the next tab, you decide on a building, which is the DI building. In this view, you will only see the content that belongs to the DI building. The rest is hidden. Then you go one step further into detail and display a floor of the building. Here you will only see what belongs to the corresponding floor. The ceilings are hidden to get the best possible overview of all rooms at the same time, so that you can work better across rooms. Switch to the 2D view to work even better. And here you can easily show and hide your imported plans. The checkbox helps you to select only the plans you need for your viewport. The side views help you to check the positions and heights. And you can also use the rulers that are available in 2D at the side of the page. For example, here you can easily see that the top edge of the floor is zero. In addition to the view tabs, you will find two other important functions. The tape measure helps you to quickly and easily measure something in your project. The zoom function allows you to always see the whole scene in the viewport. I will neglect the functions for the coordinate system, because we will work with the default settings. What we are missing now are all the functions to build the project at all. Above you will find seven modes divided into Project, Construction, Light, Calculation Objects, Export, Documentation and Manufacturer. These are usually done from the left to the right, because these different modes build on each other. For each mode you will find the corresponding functions on the left side. These also build on each other, so that you can work through from the top to bottom. The four lower tools are general functions that can support you at any time during your planning. You will also find them in the light mode, and Calculation Objects mode. Next to the tools you will find the corresponding details. The structure in the column is always the same. That means there is always an active window, above the actions and below the information. By the way, with a click on this arrow you can hide the text description of the actions to save space. If necessary, you can double-click on the tools to hide the entire column and enlarge the view window. On the right side you will find the functions to perform a calculation and on the far right the button to open and close the results overview. The display options help you to show and hide things individually during your planning process. What is missing now are the functions of the mouse. Go to the viewport and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. By pressing the mouse wheel you can move everything in the viewport. It works the same way in 3D. Press the mouse wheel and move the view. You can also rotate the whole thing by pressing the left mouse button and moving the mouse. In addition, you can make even finer moments by pressing the right mouse button. 
You can also use the keys W, A, S and D to adjust the view individually. When you activate an element, such as this table or this luminaire, you get the manipulators in the upper right corner. This luminaire can be moved or rotated, for example. And you can even scale the table. Via the right mouse button, you can also use the context menu for the same functions. By the way, Active elements are always displayed in blue. Remember to always keep an eye on the message window as well. Informative messages are marked in white, warnings in orange and arrows in red. They give you important hints during the planning process. There you go! Now you have the perfect overview of the user interface and the most important functionalities in Dialux Evo. See you in the next video!